Hey, what's going on, my friends? Welcome to the Jackson Gage Collective. My name is Jackson Gage, and this is, some say, the most intriguing podcast in the world. Today, I have uh, somebody on the show who's become a regular. You know, if you're listening to the first seven episodes, he's been on here three times, and that's because we have these conversations very often. And we figure that since they're valuable to us, they'll be valuable to you. And um, a lot of uh, spiritual, a lot of spiritual conversation today. We talk a lot about gratitude. We talk about depression. We talk about success on a spiritual level. You know, um, we talk about prosperity, and we talk about purpose. We talk about giving your gift. You know, to the world, finding your gift. Uh, we go pretty deep on this one, as, as we do most of the time. You know, we go deep in all, all of our endeavors and um, magnificent Miriam Webster is his name. Some call him Stephen Bell. You know, some say he has the AKA of Ruben Love and uh, some call him Soul Brother Rhythm. And if you're looking for him on Instagram, it's at Soul Brother Rhythm. I appreciate you listening. And before we get into this, I just want to make sure that you, you know, go to our YouTube channel, which is Jackson Gage. You subscribe, you follow, you hit the notification button. If you're on Spotify, you follow us. I would appreciate it. You share it with somebody who could use this. You know, there may be somebody in your life who you may not get anything from this, but there may be somebody who you think could really relate with this. And I'd appreciate it if you could share it with them. If you have any questions, there's a link in uh, in Spotify in the episode and on the uh, main page where you can go and leave us a, a voice message and we will we'll respond to you if it's worthy of a response and yeah you can go on iTunes follow us on there wherever you listen to podcasts you know there's video um, on Spotify we have video and audio so we're available everywhere there's podcasts Jackson Gage Collective I, I appreciate you listening and uh, hit me up at the increase life on Instagram. Like I said, if you have any questions and now we will get into this episode. Today is Thanksgiving. I'm probably uploading this a little bit later than Thanksgiving, but we talk a bit about gratitude and um, I'm grateful for this dude who has been, you know, a solid friend and brother in my life for the past, you know, six, seven years and uh, on into eternity as we uh, move along on this journey of life. So thanks again for being here, Miriam Webster. Stephen Bell. I like Miriam. I'm just sticking with Miriam. Thanks for being here, man. And welcome to the show. All right, here we go. The Jackson Gage Collective. And I'm here with the one and only the man, the myth and the legend all the way from Maui, Hawaii. Stephen Bell, aka Miriam Webster, aka Ruben Love, aka Soul Brother Rhythm. And he's got a few more aka's. They just uh, haven't come into existence yet. But uh yeah, if you've been listening to the show, you you already know Stefan. He's been on uh, episode, I think episode number three and episode number six so far. So go and check those out. We get into some deep topics, and obviously he's going to be a regular on the show. Um, you know, as we talked about in the first episode, it's kind of we we share the same path, which we like to refer to as the path of the higher man, which is, you know, the path that men go through in life to find themselves and find their truth. And uh, it's a never ending path. And, uh, you know, but for me or any man out there, it, you, you always feel lucky. A lot of guys never find, a lot of men never find people who, who are, uh, you know, congruent with them on that path or who they can relate with or who they can talk to. Luckily for me, you know, magnificent Miriam Webster and me have, have been close friends for a while, man. And we, we talk about these things on a regular basis, spirituality, mindset, you know, our life growth our struggles. And, uh, so as we speak on these things throughout the week or whatever it is, you know, it's to a point now where we're like, fuck, that's a good topic. Let's do an episode on that, you know? So within the past two weeks, and I'm sure most people listening have experienced this, but, um, probably about a week ago, and we've both gone through these throughout our friendship. You know, I didn't hear from Stefan for about five or six days, maybe seven days. I didn't have any responses to the Marco Polos or anything like that. And when that happens at this point, I already know, I already know what's going on. You know, we kind of go into the, go into the cave, maybe battling with ourselves a bit, maybe battling with some depression and whatnot. And uh, so you kind of just write it out, check on your friend. And uh, you know, I always know he'll be back and he'll be okay, but it's good to check on your friends. And uh, then we got to talking about it all week and we're like, fuck, we'll just do a, do an episode on this. So um, 
just to start, man, you want to kind of go into that, into your, um, your little excursion into your, into the, into yourself, into the darkness a little bit in the past week or so. Yeah, uh-huh. man, my, my little, uh, my hibernation. <clears throat> um, yeah, man, you know, just to touch on some of what you were saying, it is a, it's a blessing to have you as a friend along the journey. Um, I think everyone can benefit from having somebody that you can, you know, vulnerably confide in and not just one time or two times, but somebody that as you vulnerably confide into them, they also remember your story, you know? So when you talk about something maybe in six months, you know, like, yeah, you know, I've been there with you. I've seen the changes. I've seen this. And the beautiful thing is we, you know, we are our own worst critics. So in tough times, we may be hyper-focusing on our struggles, but our close confidants that have watched us achieve and succeed in life can remind us, Hey, I know right now you, you may have doubt, but remember who you are because I know who you are. I've been there with you. I've seen you. And it's so good to have people that love you in your corner to remind you who you are. Cause they remind you of your best version. And then you can reconnect with that best version. So I love Jackson because he, like you said, on this path of the higher man journey that we on, we, uh, remind ourselves of our best version. We connect and stimulate our best versions. And we also hold each other accountable because it takes one to know one. It takes one to lift one. As I'm climbing up, I need a strong man with me. As you're climbing up, you need a strong man with you. So we're also holding each other accountable to be in our best version. So I thank you for that as well. Um, Yes, sir. Yeah, man. And, you know, when, you know, trauma is a big one. Trauma, um, we all have it. You know, no one, no one goes through life and does not get touched by trauma. If you have, you're not really living for real. Like if you've never been hurt, then you haven't gone, you haven't stepped out far enough from the, from the nest or your security blanket. Um, so we all have traumas and traumas are really tied to memories. Traumas are tied to point in times of our life. Traumas <clears throat> can also encapsulate um, who we were at that time. Me and Jackson, we talk all the time about how many lives we done, we've lived. You know, um, there was the Jackson who was, you know, kid in high school or, you know, whatever experimenting with, with, with psychedelic, not psychedelic, maybe marijuana. And, you know, the young Jackson who was, you know, stepping into mindfulness, the Jackson who was a cop, the Jackson who's now a podcaster. Like we all have these different lives. And sometimes trauma, when it comes up, can pull you back into that life. And that's what it felt like for me. And in those moments, there's a lot of deep introspection where I go deep and I'm like, okay, why is this coming up right now? And what is it telling me? And what do I need to address? What have I been ignoring? Have I been ignoring something? So I ask all these questions and it's good to stop and ask questions, but at a certain point in time, you do need to pull yourself out of that introspection so you can then apply what you've learned. And sometimes I'm such a, I'm such a big critic of myself. And sometimes I expect, expect the best, I won't know when to pull out, <laughs> you know, it's like, Hey, pull out the mission's done. And Ooh, another way to talk about to that, yeah, <laughs> tell me when to pull bro. out, <laughs> you know, shoot, you would think with a bad pull a game like that, I had some kids, but luckily you know, <laughs> not, not yet, <laughs> not yet, but, um, um, but you know, there's also the paralysis of analysis. You're in there so long and then you're, trying to, you know, is, is this the right answer? Is this the right answer? Is this the best way to look at it? So a lot of the not talking or reaching out is me, you know, being in that space. And then one other thing I'll also touch on, you know, for me, there's different traumas. There's the childhood trauma that I experienced. There's the, um, trauma that I experienced being in the military, coming out of the military. Um, trauma I experienced while being a wildland firefighter, trauma I experienced from just relationships. So, you know, different times can pull up, um, different sensations as well. And this time around, I was being pulled back to that childhood trauma 
where I felt helpless and hopeless and had a lot of doubt and, um, and also feeling unworthy. And that was another, that's another component, the feeling of unworthiness that'll also kind of, uh, you know, make me self isolate. Like I need to work on me before I'm worthy of even, you know, accepting the love from my friends. Mm. Okay. So what, what pulls you into that? Do you think what pulls you into that? And also if you could hold the mic a little closer, um, to yeah, your, yeah. Closer to your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. What pulls you into that? A little and bit. then what pulls you out? You know what I mean? What, what, what draws you into that, that, you know, mm -hmm. that depression? Cause you could be vibing, you could be vibing very high and everything's good and you're flowing and then boom, you're not, you know, I won't hear from you or that happens with me too. You know, I do the same thing. I'm going and I drop into it and I'm like, fuck, I just got to be alone for a few days. Um, for you, what, what kind of pulls you into that? What triggers that? And, uh, and then how do you pull yourself out of it? You know, what triggers it is, um, what I believe triggers it is the fact that it was a coping mechanism for many years of my life, especially when I was a kid, that was the coping mechanism to isolate because isolating protected me from harm, you know, isolating allowed me to be creative. So what triggers it is when, you know, I feel when I feel overwhelmed, when I feel overwhelmed and I feel like, um, I might burn out. And that is also associated to fear. I'm not going to be able to maintain this high vibration. I'm losing this high vibration or, you know, man, I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah. You know, overwhelmed, burnt out, got, you know, have so many things going on, but now feeling exhausted and it's like, what's going on? What's going on? Um, and then not communicating that well enough so other people can understand that. And when I'm not communicating that well enough, that's when I start feeling alone with that overwhelmed feeling. And then when I start feeling alone with that overwhelming feeling or that feeling of being overwhelmed, um, yeah, that's when I feel like I need to isolate and rest or, um, or because I'm not communicating it and not giving people the chance to understand then I in turn will start feeling alone. And then it's like a, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now I'm like, Oh, no one understands right now. I don't have anyone I can talk to. No one can see that I'm, no one can even see that I'm about to burn out, man. Let me just tuck away real quick, you know? And then the other little piece is sometimes I do believe and trust in like your love and support or I got some other buddies, John and Mango. I, sometimes I do believe in trust in their love and support, but that's something that, um, you know, certain traumas and experiences in my life sometimes make me doubt love and support makes me doubt in my loneliest times. Will those people truly support me, you know, or should I just take it on on my own and then just come back when I feel good? Yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah. Loneliness is a, I was, I was reading something, I think from Aubrey Marcus the other day, and he was talking about how like the number one cause of unhappiness and depression is like a lack of connection, community, a yeah, lack that. of community. Did you see mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lack of community. And, uh, that's, that's super important. Even if it's a small community of people around you, there's a lot of people that don't have a community. Maybe their, their job is their only social life whatsoever. And, uh, if that's you, you know, I, I highly suggest that you find a way to get involved with some type of group of people. Listen to this podcast, hang out with us. You know, we're, we're here. You can hit us up. You can talk to us, you know, at the increased life at soul brother rhythm. You can talk to us. Um, you know, I, I of course recommend jujitsu highly. Um, hold on. I gotta, well, let me see this real quick. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh yeah. I, um, I recommend jujitsu to anybody that, that was, that kind of saved me through, um, through divorce, which was a really lonely time for me, hard time mm -hmm. moving to a new city, 
moving to San Diego, going through a divorce and I started jujitsu and, uh, that automatically got me connected with a bunch of other, um, you know, people who are goal oriented, health minded, disciplined, positive people who are helping each other. And you can go there every day and commune with them doing something that's, you know, helps you physically and mentally, spiritually. So yeah, I highly recommend jujitsu or in any way that you can get involved in some type of group activity for one. And, uh, for two, before I forget, I want to throw in, um, I, I know that some of the triggers for me when I go into depression is you have to live a very disciplined lifestyle to you remain at a high vibration, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, that's hard for a lot of people, man. I go to work and I see a lot of undisciplined people, man, a lot of undisciplined men, you know, partying, going out to drink alcohol every weekend, um, chasing after women constantly, um, spend their free time playing video games, hours, grown ass men, you know, hours and hours playing video games. And, uh, that's a recipe for disaster, destruction and loss and fucking depression. Um, so you, you have to set up this disciplined lifestyle where you're making sure you work out every day. You're making sure you eat good. You drink enough water. You're taking the correct supplements. You're around the right people. You're filling your head. Like you said on the last episode, you're filling your head with the correct, um, medium, whatever it is, you know, instead of social media, you're listening to books, you're reading books, you're listening to positive podcasts. You're listening to the Jackson Gage collective, you know, um, you're getting enough sleep, whatever you can do. And then you got to do that on a daily basis. And I've, I've recognized when I'm like, fuck, why do I feel like shit? Oh, I haven't been eating good. And I'm in a fucking three day depression. Cause I decided to eat like shit the last two days, or I haven't been sweating every day. I haven't been stretching. I haven't been doing my workout and it's a, it's an easy reminder, you know, and if, if we stay disciplined, we can feel good. But, um, another big one I mentioned to you also is, is um, having a goal, you know, having, um, something to work toward that one's huge because especially as men, you know, naturally we have goal, you know, naturally our goal is to go out, provide whatever we got to do, hunt and, uh, always out there doing something. But in society now, in these cages that we've created for ourselves, we, we, we have everything given to us. And so we're no longer the hunter, you know, and, 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 you know, that just hypothetically speaking, I don't, I don't mean just hunting fucking deer and shit, but we're no longer, a lot of times you don't have a big goal. You go to work, you come home, you get, you get your paycheck. It's easy. And and you just fuck around. And, uh, Mm -hmm having a goal to work on something that you love, something that you're passionate about, something that will serve the world as you work on it and serve the people around you and, and something that makes you feel good doing it. That can take you, that can, that in itself can transform your whole fucking life, man. You know, I, I've noticed working on this podcast that fucking m- my whole life is, is kind of elevated through this just because I've been working on the, um, just because I've been working on this on my days off, man, you know, and, uh, even if you're working full time, because a lot of people will tell you I'm working full time. I don't have time to work on my fucking dreams and shit. And I, I, that was me for a long time. And and I'll shut up after this here. I'm just going off on this idea, but, um, that was me for the longest time. Well, I can't work on any, it was, you know, sometimes it's hard. You you get married, you have kids and you fucking full-time work, but, um, the free time that you do have, you figure out what you want to do and you put your, even if it's a few hours each day, you put your time into it, you put your time into it and let that grow and create a vision for that, that that thing is going to grow into something that will eventually get you out of your job, but don't do it for that reason. Do it because you like doing it, you know? So yeah, man, it, you know, we live a disciplined life and that, that is a, I think that's a huge determinant in how we feel as we go through life with depression and everything else, man. So, um, no, no, I, um, I'm taking my phone out just so I can take notes. Last time I told you I'm going to take notes next time as we go along, because there's points that, you know, I'll listen to you and all these, I'll hear all these points and I want to touch on them. And because I got a, you know, scattered brain or, you know, whatever the case is, I might, I might, you know, want to hit on five points, only touch on two and forget the rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, um, it, um I, I, I marked off a couple. Too, a notepad is even quicker, time. man. Sometimes I would I'm, do that with William because in the soul rollers, you know, 
If you think yeah. I'm fucking long winded, I love you, William, but William could go on 38 <laughs> topics for 17 minutes and shit, you know? And uh, so I just got a notepad and started, I would just scribble down a few words for each note, you know, while he's yeah. talking and I can go back yeah. and listen. Yeah, man. So, yeah. but yeah, I'll do that. Go ahead, man. I don't know if you took some notes on that or what. No, I did. I did. I did. Um, so, one of the you asked me a two part question, right? What brings me down? What pulls me in? What pulls me out? So I didn't get to the part that pulls me out, but everything that you talked on just now is what pulls me out. So, um, and it's funny. The very thing that pulls me out is also the thing that if it's if it's not there, well, I'm more susceptible to being pulled in, and that's the self care, the self love, the discipline, and you know, having goals, all those things are what pull me out and also keep me out. But if those things are lacking, then that's when I'll slip back in. And like you said, too, you touched on, you talked about how, you know, diet, you know, um, it doesn't happen. Sometimes it can happen off one meal, but usually it takes a couple of days and then three days, four days in, of you, you know, neglecting, you know, your diet, then you're like, oh man, I'm feeling, I'm feeling off what's going on. And then it's almost, you know, you know, you, you slipped. So those are things that, um, help pull me out also help keep me out. Um, and you know, goal fulfillment, fulfillment is so important. And you, you touched on, um, you know, people working jobs, where, you know, it, even if, even if you have a community at your job that is rewarding and fulfilling, I mean, if you do, that's great. But if you don't, and you're spending your downtime playing video games or you're spending your downtime, you know, chasing women or partying and all these things are quick, very quick dopamine hits, right? It's the video game. It's quick access to pleasure chasing women, quick access to pleasure, partying, quick access to pleasure, short term highs, you know, and nothing really long term and present, um, sustaining. And even if you only have four hours out of your day during the weekday, we need to treat that time as the most precious time of our day. That time should be filled with our highest goals. That time should be filled with our, our greatest passion. Like that's what it should be filled with. Um, and that's something that I'm learning. You know, what, what gives me the most joy? What, what inspires me? What lights my fire? And loving myself is doing those things for myself. That's, that's something that I'm learning too. So, you know, sometimes we may be having fun, but are we really taking care of ourselves? just because we're having fun doesn't mean you're taking care of yourself just because you're enjoying yourself. Um, and those quick hits of dopamine from, from this, that, and the third doing all these quick hits can keep you in a, you know, almost in a hypnotized state. Um, there's a woman, the author bell hooks, and she has a book all about love really illuminating. And for me, it was a paradigm shift on what love meant. And she has a really great rest in peace to bell hook. She passed away. She has a really great, and I believe me and her share the same birthday. So shout out, um, <laughs> definition of what love is. She says, love is extending one's own energy towards another person's spiritual growth. That's when you love somebody and growing up, and this was a part of the book that's really a, a big paradigm shift. She had to come to terms that love was not present in her home just because her parents fed her, clothed her, make sure she got to and from school, things like that. That's not love. That's just taking care of somebody. And people get into relationships with others and with themselves that are not loving, just full of care, and then wondering why they're not feeling fulfilled. And it, it becomes troubling. You're like, damn, I, I care about this person. They're good to me. But for some reason, like, it's just not feeling right. And then even with ourselves, it's like, man, like, you know, I'm going out. I'm doing this for myself. I'm doing this for myself. But I still feel unfulfilled. And it's like, what is it? It's because love isn't present. Care is present. But love isn't present. 
and we gotta we have to really dive deep into what how can we extend so those four hours out of the day how can i extend my energy in those four hours in a way that will lead to my spiritual growth now we're utilizing our time properly and now we're we're loving ourselves and when that's present it's so hard to slip into depression and to kind of bring this right back around to what we're talking about that's practicing gratitude when we have if you only have four hours or one hour and you look at it like yes i'm grateful because now i have however much time to devote to it, it enhancing my spiritual growth yes i can't wait and then you do it and then when you're done you feel like you've you you feel fulfilled and that takes gratitude and appreciation and we have to have <laughs> saying we i don't want to sound like i'm preaching to the people like i got the answers and I'm, I'm also what i'm saying is what i'm also practicing and what i am practicing is really looking at gratitude and appreciation as a as a philosophy as a way of life because it enhances everything when you're grateful it enhances you know we've all we've all been you know without at some point in time whether you're working out and you're tired and you're exhausted you're thirsty you're hungry and as soon as you get that water and that meal you're like oh man I'm grateful you know or you know you've been struggling hurting trying to trying to find a way and you get that break and you're so grateful to someone else that might be small, but to you, that was, that was monumental and gratitude determines whether something is monumental or small gratitude determines whether something is fulfilling or, or empty. It's, it's such a, such a powerful compassing guide. And, um, so yeah, yeah. So with that, let me see. I touched on fulfillment, self-care, self-love. Let me jump on this passion. gratitude real quick, man. You might have to take more notes before before I forget, man. But yeah, um, yeah. No, I hit all my I hit all my points. Yeah, man. <laughs> um, um, the uh, I I also took took a couple notes here, man. Um, but um, as far as the relationship portion, the what say that one more time. What that lady. What was her name? The author? What did she Bell, say love Bell is? Hooks. Bell, Bell Hooks. Bell Hooks, who her. shares the same birthday as you, which means yes, she sir. shares the same birthday as my father. That's and right. my good friend, Rabani Willis in Butler Park, and uh, Will Smith. So that's yep. a, yeah. So what, what did she say love is? It's extending, it's extending your energy towards another person's spiritual growth. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. And really, like you said, it's, it's, you can apply that really. You c the only love there really is, is self-love. I, I believe, you know, you, you love yourself. If you love yourself, then your interactions with other people are love. You can't love anybody else unless you love yourself. There's True. no, that doesn't, it, there's no existence of loving another person. If you don't love who you are, you know, if you don't love yourself and if you do love yourself, then like I said, your interactions in relationships are, it's just going to be love. So, um, you know, I get, I, you hear so often, oh, this, I want a relationship with somebody who makes me happy or, you know, you make me, you make me so happy. Mm. That's a hard one because you, you, you really, there's nothing outside of you that can make you happy. It can make you maybe feel good. You know, you might feel good or, but if you're depending on someone else for your happiness, then you're going, you're climbing up the wrong tree. You know what I mean? Um, and then mm -hmm. there's, I see that in our society a lot. Maybe it's propagated to people that you need to, uh, find somebody else for love, but, uh, you know, you work on your own spiritual growth and, you know, that's you loving yourself. And the more you love yourself, the more you radiate love to the world. And, um, as far as that gratitude piece, I just wanted to throw in and then I'll let you jump back onto your notes or whatever you had written down there. Mm -hmm. But, um, I've noticed recently, man, that as soon as I made the choice, it's as soon as I made the choice to be grateful for where I am and for everything in my life, which has taken a long time, 
in, in life. You know, this has taken, it's taken a long time to learn how to be grateful for everything. But as soon as I made the choice to be grateful for my job, you know, I got a job. I enjoy it. I like my job. I like going to work. It's the first time I've ever enjoyed going to work. I I'm grateful for the people there. Really cool people that I work with, you know, um, it's when it's time for work, I'm not annoyed. You know, I get to go there and I started bringing that. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for this job. I'm grateful for this life. I'm grateful for the two days I get to work on my podcast. You know, I get two days a week when I'm off. Sometimes I'm working six days. So I get one day I wake up, I go for a run or I hit the gym. I come back and I work until I go to bed on my podcast. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for this freedom that I have. If it's only six or seven hours to work on my passion, I'm creating something for the world as God works through me in the creation. It's something that I love and I'm grateful for that, you know? And as soon as I started mm-hmm. living that way, I, I've, I've just seen the wavelength of my life begin to change. My motivation has gotten higher. Um, I'm creating more. I feel good a lot more often. <clears throat> and this coming off of a really long, harsh depression. <clears throat> And maybe that was part of it. Maybe I had to experience that to really have gratitude for life. But um, uh, gratitude is really the catapult for your life, man. Like I can see things expanding for me because I, and I had to trace it back to gratitude. You know, there's opportunities opening up. Um, yeah, things are going well and I'm feeling good and I'm, um, it's making me want to create more. And that starts with giving thanks for where you are right now. And there's a lot of people who don't like the job they're at, have excuses as to why most people, you know, you can, you can, um, probably, um, relate to this, but most people, it's a little different in Hawaii. A lot of people in Hawaii are open-minded and have, have a dream that they want to work on. But most people here, you know, in the matrix, you, you talk to them and they're, what's your, what's your dream, man? And they won't even have an answer. You know, they're like, Oh, I want to get the best gaming fucking monitor so I can play games or, I'm saving up to get a fucking certain car I want to get, whatever, you know, and, um, you know, we're operating without any almost mindlessly through this life. And, uh, I think that's part of the purpose of life, man, is to, you know, um, Picasso said the meaning of life is to find your gift. The meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. I want to say that one more time. Cause that's one of my favorite quotes. Pablo Picasso, the meaning of life is to find your gift. That's the meaning. Find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away, you know, and uh, just that, just that right there. What's the meaning? Find your gift. If you haven't found your gift, find it. That should be your number one thing right now. If you want to find meaning, find your gift, right? And then if you want to find purpose after you find your gift, give that gift away. Exclude money from the fucking equation. Give your gift away. You know, and that's how we reach the, the, that's how we reach the vibe that we're looking for. You know, that's how we reach the highest levels of success in our society, by by giving our, our gift away to the world. And, um, I think that all starts with gratitude, man. That's what I'm learning now at this portion of my life. Gratitude for every moment. Fuck worrying about the future. Fuck worrying about the past. I'm happy to be alive and I'm happy to be creating. I'm going to work. Fuck it. Time is, time is an illusion. People say I don't have enough time. Time is fucking infinite. I have time. I have the rest of fucking infinity to do this shit, you know? So let's just enjoy this moment and whatever happens, happens. But, um, yeah, man, gratitude is a huge approach to life and it's a good thing to talk about on Thanksgiving day. So <laughs> anyhow, church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. So, I'm gonna jump on my points <laughs> that I took. Um, let me see. Oh yeah. So when you you talked about um, when people say, "Oh, I love this person because they make me happy," you know, or you know, looking for someone to give you know, bring that happiness or love into your life. <laughs> James Baldwin had touched on how we really don't have a full um, understanding of how to use the English language. A lot of what, and I'll I'll say what he was seeing during his time, he was seeing a lot of people reiterating, um, you know, uh, cliches. How are you doing? Like I said, common one, how are you doing? 
And I feel like it's so cliche that, and, and it's, it's, it's heard so many times when we say it so easily, so frequently that it almost loses its meaning. You know, how are you doing? But rather than me choosing how I want to express that, instead of saying, how are you doing? You know, just getting a little bit deeper, you know, Hey, I would like to know how your day is. Um, there's just, and that's just a small example, but he says, we don't really have a, back then he saw people didn't have a full grasp of the English language. They weren't using it on their own. They were just regurgitating and repeating phrases that people have attached meaning to. And I forget where I came across this, but it talks about how, um, you know, our, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And the beautiful thing about language is that words are labels for things. The more words you have can mean that you have, you know, a more understanding of the world around you. And, um, you're able to describe and express and understand things a little bit more concisely. I say all that to say, I think we use love way too much. And sometimes when we are vibing with a friend and we feel happy, I think what we're feeling is gratitude. When you're looking at someone and make you smile in that moment, it's like, man, what you're feeling is your gratefulness for that person. It's not that you, 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 maybe you do love them, but love isn't selfish. It's selfless. So if I'm, if you do something and it makes me happy, it's not love because love is extending my energy towards your spiritual growth. What I'm experiencing is gratitude for your love. And just that simple phrasing, I feel like can empower us in moments to where we have more governance over our own emotions in real time, rather than being like, oh, uh, you know, they make me so happy and all this stuff. It's like, man, I'm grateful for that person. Now that I've expressed that I'm grateful for this person, I want to appreciate this person. Now that I express that I appreciate this person, I want to extend my love to this person. And now I want to do things to keep them in my life rather than just Oh, I need you. I need you around to keep me happy. That's selfish. And it's, there's so much power in how we say things. Um, that's something that I'm trying to practice. I don't think it's a coincidence that the word spelling is spelling. Cause you're, you know, almost creating spells, with your words, you know, and we talk about the power of affirmation and manifesting. It's important to be mindful. And then the other thing that I jot down is gratitude will allow you to see the tools. Yes. Like you said, you know, being grateful <laughs> and, and then you're like, same thing for me, my brother, you know, since I started applying gratitude. Now I can say, Oh man, I'm grateful for this job I have. Now I see how much of a, of a tool it is to allow me to do X, Y, and Z. Then I'm starting to do X, Y, and Z. Oh man, I'm grateful for this friendship that I have with you. Now it's become this tool for us to sit down and have these conversations and you're grateful for your curiosity and, and your connection with people and you've created this podcast. Like it's a, when we use gratitude, we're able to see what we can create with around us. You know, when, if you don't have gratitude, you look around and everything you see is worthless, right? One man's trash is another man's treasure. If I look in this space with no gratitude, it's like, I, I can end up throwing everything away. But if I walk in here with gratitude, man, you know, look at a kid, you give a kid, you know, some popsicle sticks. He's so grateful. He makes a little popsicle house, you know, or <laughs> whatever, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a powerful tool and, um, something that I'm definitely practicing. Um, yeah, for somewhere you, you talked about pain and I wrote down pain, pain brings enlightenment. Oh, the depression. Yeah. Sometimes, um, I heard, I heard, a, I think it was a, a biologist saying that the reason why one of the, one of the, one of the applicable reasons depression may have been in our depression is a thing is that like depression makes you want to isolate. It makes you want to stop and slow down. He was saying that there's a couple of, couple of applicable reasons for survival, you know, back in, you know, when we were in the food chain. You know, when we were inside the food chain right now, we're not, mm -hmm. but when we were in that bitch, you know, when you're depressed, your, you know, your awareness is off. You know, sometimes you, you have that person that's depressed and they're just kind of just floating around aimlessly. That'll get you killed when there's, 
you know, saber tooth and whatever running around. Like you're not going to survive war, warring tribes. You're not going to survive. And, you know, our reptilian brain, which is solely based on instincts and survival. I think sometimes when it knows you're not present and aware enough to protect this being, it's going to trigger you to want to isolate until you, until you're more, you know, receptive and aware you need to mourn or grieve and get, get through whatever it is that's deadening your senses. Cause that's depression too, right? When something's depressed, there's a deadening of senses. So when we are depressed, I think another reason why we like to isolate is because it's a safety mechanism to process grief. But once you're done processing, you know, that's where pain can bring enlightenment. If you're willing to go to those dark places <laughs> that we talk about, sometimes we'll, you know, um, take a little trip with some marijuana, you know, with the plant and go to a dark place just to come out with, come out with a little bit of a knowledge to apply. But, um, you gotta be willing to go to those dark places. And when you do, you come back with, um, you come back with some tools and that ties right back in. Be, be grateful for those moments, that pain, be grateful for that pain because it's going to teach you something. I got two more points, fantasy dreams, yeah, <laughs> you know, um, you know, out here there are, there are a lot of dreamers and I remember being in DC, living in Washington, DC, there, there wasn't, you know, political capital of the world, um, or political capital of, of America. So you had a lot of people that were just objective thinkers, not subjective, just purely objective think thinkers, black and white, very successful in terms of, you know, capitalism and money. Um, but some, a lot of them lacked imagination, a lot of, but, uh, they were, they were driven people, funny, cool to be around, but some of them did lack imagination. And out here, there's a lot of people that have a lot of passion and dreams, but some of these people are, they're so subjective that they, they dream in unpractical ways. And what they aspire and dream and want can never be achieved. And they kind of just exist. Like they feel like they're not grounded. And there's definitely, there needs to be a healthy balance of the two where have dreams, you know, <laughs> I don't want to tell nobody, I don't want to tell anybody to do anything, but from what I've, from what I've seen interacting with some people, some people, yeah, they have these dreams and they're so fantastical that they're ungrounded. And I've been in that position where I had dreams that were so fantastical that like I was ungrounded because deep down, I didn't believe those dreams. The dream was fun to imagine. The dream was fun to hold on to. But it was a part of me that didn't believe that it could be real. I think sometimes we even do that like in relationships, you know, you, you, yep. you like, you know, that's the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the part that uh, I feel like that's the part that'll, I mean, cause any dream is really attainable, you know? If I was just listening to Jeff Bezos right before we talked and he was talking mm -hmm. about how when he, when he started his, uh, before he started his company, he hit up one of his buddies who had some dough, you know, and he was like, Hey, I want you to invest in me. I'm going to sell books out of my garage. And, uh, he was like, I'm going to, I'm going to be worth a hundred billion dollars. The guy was talking that told him this, his buddy was taught telling this story. He was like, yeah, he told me he's going to be worth a hundred billion. And he was like, at that time, a hundred billion countries didn't even have a hundred billion dollars. So mm -hmm. this guy selling books out of his garage saying he's going to be fucking worth a hundred billion dollars. And you know, your buddy tells you that you're like, all right, well, you know, I, but he was like, that was Jeff Bezos truth. He believed it before it, it was even a fucking in motion, you know, mm -hmm. but he believed it. And he was saying how he truly believed it. And he worked until he got to that point, you know? And, uh, I do believe dreams are possible no matter how big your dream is, but the key the magical key to that is self-belief. If there's any doubt, if there's any bit of doubt, you know, then the dream can't fucking materialize. And that's where faith comes in. You know, people mm -hmm. can go to church, they can say they believe in God and whatnot. But if you have doubt, <laughs> if you have doubt, then it's all for naught because that's what faith is. Faith mm -hmm. is materializing your dreams and believing that it's going to happen, whatever that dream may be. And, uh, you know, any doubt, you know, I think I said it the other day, William Shakespeare said, you know, doubt kills more dreams than failure ever will. And, uh, that's 100% true. And any of these, any, any mindset teachers or spiritual teachers, it's all, that's the, that's the number one rule, man. Like 
doubt is the killer of progression. If you doubt anything that you're doing, then that's where you need to start the work. You know, the Mm self-belief, if you have a dream that you Mm -hmm. want to accomplish. Um, yeah, man. So, um, maybe you can go keep going on that topic. I just wanted to jump in before I, uh, forgot that because you were talking about dreams a little bit and that's a, um, I have a passion for seeing people, um, you know, realize their dreams. That's one of the things I appreciate, appreciate about you because you, you know, you'll, you'll encourage me as well. You know, you're a big encourager of that. Um, thank you, man. You know, yeah, faith is definitely important. Faith is definitely important. And I, and I, and with my statement, I did not mean to, in no, no means, shape or form, I'm trying to discourage anyone from not dreaming as big as they can. Um, but there's also work that needs to be done with those dreams, you know, and, but, and then right, there's faith. And Martin Luther King talks about faith in terms of religion. He was like, we need to have a, and even though faith, not an if then faith, and if then faith will be, if this happens, then I will believe in practice. If, if I get this, then I will walk the path, you know, and he's talking about our relationship with God, but an even though is even though things are rough, I still believe and give thanks and give grace, even though I haven't achieved what I wanted yet, or even though I may have lost this, like I'm still, I'm, I, I still believe in and and give grace, you know, and it's, that's powerful. That's, that's real power right there. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's, that's definitely the way to manifest. Yeah, no, that's definitely the way to manifest. Yeah, man. Connor, Connor McGregor, when he was at the height of his shit, you probably remember him saying it, but he said, um, he said, it's easy to fucking be positive and envision things when everything's going good. But when you, when the debt collectors are coming and you're living on fucking welfare and shit, and you can still imagine yourself at the heights, that's where the true manifestation comes. You know, it's just like what you're talking about with Martin Luther King, man, you know, giving thanks no matter. That's why we talk about gratitude right now. It goes back to what we've been talking about. Give Mm -hmm. thanks for where you are right now, because the universe, Mm -hmm. God, whatever is not going to open up for you. If you can't be grateful for where you're at right now, what makes you think you should deserve more if you're not grateful for where you are right now, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Um, and that's, that's that's how God says it. That's exactly how God says it. God just said it, bro. God just said it, bro. I am that, right? Yeah. <laughs> God, God just said it. Peace, God. You Peace, know? God. Well, um, and I believe when we talk about faith, anytime we talk about faith, we're talking about God, whatever your belief is. You know, Martin mm-hmm. Luther King may have been coming from a, what was it? Um, a Christian. Christian. Christian standpoint. Mm-hmm. But faith is faith. Faith is believing in something that's unseen and having no doubt walking toward it. You know, I also, I, um, he also said, you know, you don't have to see the entire staircase. Just take the first step. You don't have to see where the staircase goes. Just take the next step. You know, that's Martin Luther King too. And that he's talking about faith and you can include God in that, or you can take God out of it. Cause it doesn't matter what you believe faith is necessary. And when I say faith, I don't mean belief in a God. I mean, moving toward the vision that the universe or God has put in your heart with no doubt, you know, and that's, that's to me, that's what faith is. And you can include God. Or you can, you know, everyone has their own beliefs and you can twist it around however you want, you know, but for me, I'm talking about God, the universe, whatever you want to call it is, you know, for some reason you have a vision for your life. We all have a vision for who we want to be. Everybody has a vision for who they wish they could be. Even if it's hidden way down there, when you were a kid, there's someone you want to be, you see yourself as. And to me, that's, that's the vision. That's the mission that's been placed in our heart by the, by something bigger than us. And it wants to express itself through us by putting us in that position. But doubt is where the ego, the devil, whatever you want to call it, that comes in and stops most people, you know, and, um, anything, anything is possible to those that believe, you know, and and that's, that's my personal belief on that, on that topic. So, no, I, I agree too, man. And, you know, I had, I had one more point and, and this ties in or it can tie in when it comes to, um, you know, you were talking about um, our gifts, right? The, per- uh, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give, give your gift. And I know in, in today's society, um, you know, monetizing your gift is so popular. You know, everyone, if someone sees you're good at something, they're going to be like, oh, you, you should make money off of it, make money off of it. And right then and there, you know, the, the, the true passion is, is, is you're being removed from the, from the meaning 
of what you were what you were doing or why you started doing what you were doing. And, um, you know, with faith and gratitude and, and, and just even just reciting that Martin Luther King quote just now for myself, it just, it just, it just, it grew in its own meaning. And, um, for me, there's things that I've postponed starting because, um, you know, I didn't believe it was the right time or, postponed starting because, you know, I want it to be as successful as it can be or whatever the case may be. But the, as soon as I said that quote, that's when faith came back in. It's like, well, you know, that's a, if then faith, if this happens, then I'll start. If this happens, then I'll invest. No, even though this isn't happening right now, even though this isn't the way I would like it to be, or even though I don't have all everything, I'm still going to start. Even though I only have a, four hours out of my day, I'm still going to start or I'm still going to do it like that. If then, and even though it applies to, it applies to so much, it applies to everything. Um, you know, so to, yeah, that just, <laughs> That just, that just grew for me. And that's the beauty about life, man. Like you can hear something 10 years ago and then a decade later, it's like, oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't even know it went that deep. And then it opens up a brand new, a brand new world. Um, but yeah, with our gifts, you know, it is the purpose is to give it away, but not for monetary reasons. To give it away just because. Yeah. 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 And I think, I think, you know, the way I think of that is when he, when, you know, the quote itself, you know, give it away. When I give you something, I'm giving you something, you know, when I give you a piece of advice or, you know, I'm giving it to you, I don't expect anything in return for that gift that I'm giving, you know, and that's, that, that's what separates this highly self-actualized people. And, the, and then the people that are leave, living these, you know, BCO lives, you know, down mm -hmm. on earth that are fighting for their existence, competing you know, I'm, I've been I've been reading the science of getting rich by Wallace Waddles a lot, and he talks a lot about you know, and he's coming from a spiritual standpoint. It's a spiritual book, and uh, he talks a lot about the you can't you can't find success at the competitive level on a on a uh, you can find you might find monetary success, but success in general as a whole as a life, you know, by competing and trying to make more money and trying to make more money than this person and being competitive about it you know, that's, that's not the way to go. It's creating value by giving your gift and, and you will be compensated for your mm -hmm. gift as you create value. If you're not making the money you want right now in the world, you haven't created the value. You haven't become valuable enough to enough people. Yeah. If you want, if you don't like what you see in your bank account, then you have to look in the mirror and say, I haven't shared my value. I haven't become valuable enough to the people around me for there to be more in there. You know, as you become valuable, without money being your goal, as you make yourself more valuable by giving your gift, that those numbers will increase. And, and, and it's not even that you're trying to do it. You're not going after money. You're going after service, but as you go after service and become valuable, the money increases because people want your gifts. They want to pay you for that. You know, they want to pay you. If they see you as valuable, they want to give you their money. You know, I, I, I only buy from things that I, I only buy things that are valuable to my life, you know? I don't randomly give people money hoping they'll fucking give me something, you know? So, um, what were you saying about the value and the gift money, value and gift? I took a note, but I lost track of what that was. Oh, well, it's all good. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Yeah. No money for money for our gifts. Um, they're not trying to, they not exploit our gifts for monetary reasons but share them. And you're right. Like I thought about what you just said just now. And like some of the sports figures that I, that I admire and respect the reason why they became the greatest of their craft is not because they were chasing success because they had passion for the craft and they were chasing mastery. That's how they became the best. That's how Kobe became one of the best. That's how Muhammad Ali became one of the best. That's how George St. Pierre and, Daniel Cormier and John Jones and all these individuals that, you know, I respected how they, how they have just been the greats. That's how they did it. They weren't chasing the money. 
it came yeah. along with it. They knew that if I keep being successful, I'll keep getting richer. But the only way they could keep doing that was mastering their craft. And yeah, yeah. And, then look, and that's, look how, that's from loving your passion. And then look how many people, because some people hate, oh, he's just playing the game. He's fucking, he's just doing this. He's getting all that money, but he's doing what he loves. He's mastering the craft and he's sharing it. You know, he's putting himself out on the line. And how many people, how many people have say Kobe, how many people did he serve with his passion? How many people, millions of fucking people watched him do what he loves. Of course he's going to get paid and he was good at it. You know, millions of people watched him, you know, and you say the same thing with actors and actresses. They're just working on their craft and, but they're serving their, their gift to millions of people. You know, there's a book called the go giver. And I highly recommend that to anybody. That's probably, it's, um, it's a, it's a story, but it's, uh, they go over the five stratospheric, uh, laws of success that'll, that'll mm. turn your, whatever you are into, that can help you become highly successful in life. And none of it is about, is about money. And, uh, one of the laws they talk about, you know, serving, you know, your value is in relation to how many people you serve, you know? Mm-hmm. So the more people you can serve, if you figure out how to serve, you want to make a million dollars, you know, serve a million people. How are you going to serve a million people? You know, start by serving one and you go from there, you know, and on that, what you were, that, that mm-hmm. Martin Luther King quote, you know, there's another good quote that's relative to that. That is, um, most people are waiting on God. Most people are waiting on God. You know, when this happens, when this goes good in my life, when I get a girlfriend, when I get a better job, when I get done with college, you know, when this time frame opens up, when I have a little bit more time in a couple of years, most people are waiting on God. But in every single case, God is waiting on you. God is mm-hmm. waiting on you. You know, mm-hmm. God's never going to make the first move. The universe is waiting on you to take action. And that's when the wheels start spinning, mm-hmm. you know? So most, most people are waiting on God, but in all cases, God is waiting on you. So, um, that, that, uh, whatever you that Martin Luther King quote, you said, uh, made me think of that mm-hmm. quote and I love that quote. So, um, this is a good, this has gotten good, bro. Shit. I'm enjoying talking about this shit, man. I love this shit. <laughs> me too, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, me spiritual too, man. success, bro. Spiritual <laughs> success, man. This is good shit. This is valuable yeah. shit right here. Here, here we go. Perfect example. We are serving a gift to people. And we're not looking to make money. Are you trying to make money off of this? No, I'm not trying to make money off of this. I just want the people around me to succeed. You know, I want to see the people around me living God's purpose for their life, you know, and this is a good way to get that message out to the people around, you know, to anyone around, Mm -hmm. because in today's day and age, it's, it's, you don't hear this message as much and it's getting, it's getting darkened out even more and more as we move along, you know, the, um, Mm -hmm. people are so people are, society's starting to get to the point where they doubt God because of what religion has done to God, you know, so they doubt it because there's so much bullshit within religion and whatnot. And so you got so many people who are questioning God, but the only reason they're questioning God is because they don't understand God. You know, they just think, Oh God is, I don't believe in some man up in the sky and all these stories from the Bible and this and that, but really there's such a deep metaphysical meaning behind you know, there's such a deeper connection to what God is and what we are. And when mm-hmm. you can really tune into that and start learning that you can create whatever the fuck you want because you realize you are one with it. You realize mm-hmm. you are one with God, you know? And, um, I think that'll be a common topic on this, on this podcast, because when people can tune into that, we can help people start seeing their realizing their visions for their lives, you know? Mm-hmm. So, and that's powerful, man. That's powerful shit. You know? Uh, to me, that's, to me, that's, that's a fucking, to see people working toward their vision or, um, r- you know, elevating their life into something greater and living their purpose, man, that's better than any fucking monetary value, man, to me for my life. When I can see someone around me, if maybe be inspired to do that, that's, that's what the fuck I want to see freeing people from the matrix, you know, on mm-hmm. some Harriet Tubman shit. You know what I mean? 100%, man, I can dig you it. know, freeing people from the fucking matrix from the fucking mind chains that, that, that they're stuck in. So yeah, Mm -hmm. man. Hell yeah, bro. Like you out there on Maui doing your thing, man. That's pretty far from the fucking matrix. Matrix is still out there, but I mean, 
for some reason it's if you're in america that's one of the freest spaces unless you're like up in the mountains in montana or alaska or some shit wyoming yeah you know. man <laughs> yeah no that's that's real man you know i i when i was doing wildland firefighting you know that would take me out west so you know i got out of the military i went straight to i went back to maryland where i'm from <clears throat> you know did some schooling you know whatever whatever but then um, this opportunity to be a wildland firefighter came up. So I went out west and did that. that and that took me to Colorado, uh, Washington State, um, Montana, um, Missoula, Montana, you know, Boise, Idaho, and all across. And those vast, wide open spaces, man, I can understand why those cowboys just love just roaming in the open plains. Because you, when you're when you're out there and you see nothing but god's land you feel free when you look out you just see vast open wilderness and you don't see any buildings or infrastructure there's no cars no roads it's just mountains and sky and and you know birds and and that's all you when you stop take a deep breath all you hear is just wind and 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 animals it it's it's liberating it's so peaceful and free um and being out here, yeah, you know, the matrix is still out here. It's still out here, but, um, but I definitely came out here to escape it in, in some capacities. And, um, you know, Dave Chappelle had a, had a told a story about when he was a kid and he was chasing being a comedian and his parents are very successful. I think they're both educators. They're something, but, um, his dad was talking to him about being a comedian and they were talking about how much he could make and his, you know, his dad was like, you know, how are you going to be successful being a comedian? He was like, dad, if I can make, I think he said 50,000 a year or said, if I can make what you make being a comedian, like I'll be happy. And then his dad kind of stopped. And I guess, you know, in his mind, you know, during that time, but it's probably early eighties, you know, Eddie Murphy is, is booming. And, and when people, if you say you want to do something, I think a lot of times people will automatically go to who's the most successful person in that field and they kind of think you're striving for that same success. And I think that's what his dad was thinking. Like, here's you a young kid, you're silly, you're trying to be another Eddie Murphy. He was like, listen, listen if I can just make a teacher's salary off of, off of being a comic, I'll be happy. And his dad kind of stopped him and was like, if you stay that way, you'll probably be successful then. Because you're just looking to just support yourself while doing what you love. You're not looking at, you know, trying to uh, accumulate all the riches in the world. You just want to support yourself and do what you love. And that humility and that groundedness, and it's also appreciation and gratitude too, is in there too. You got to be grateful. You got to be humble to be grateful. Because if you're not humble stepping in, you're like, I'm going to kill the game, son. I'm going to go in here and take this shit over, son. Ain't no, you know, and you might, you're going to get humble quick. Because, you know, because like you said, if you want to serve a million people or if you want to be a millionaire, try serving a million people and start with one and then two, then three. And I think anyone who has ever tried being a brand or creating a brand, you realize that you have to think less about what you think is great and think more about what is going to be valuable in its own sake. What can people utilize just because I think this is dope just because I think it's cool. Just because I think it's funny might not mean it will translate until you understand the voice of the people. And that's when you see like greats hit their stride, like musicians, when they they're creating, putting music out there. But when they, when they create like a hit or they create something and people are like, Oh, well, we love what you just did. They're like, Oh, you like that? Well, guess what? I'm gonna make a whole album of that then that album just booms, explodes. Or a comedian finding their stride, talking about things, and then they hit something, and then everyone laughs at that. As, oh, you thought that's funny? I'm going to make a whole special about that. And Kevin Hart, because I remember when Kevin Hart first kind of came on the scene, his comedy was a lot about how small he was, and then he would also talk about his, his, his family. He talked about a lot of things, but he started – Finding like, all right, what's my niche? What what do I do that people like so I can just hone in on that instead of me just trying to be another Martin Lawrence or Chris Rock? So, <laughs> you know, being humble, you'll be humbled. You get out there, you try to serve one, serve two, 
And then you'd be like, man, they're not really liking this. And if you want to continue again, you got to remove yourself from the equation. It's about serving, you know, it's about giving. So it's not about you at a certain point. You got to say, it's like, it's not about me. It's just me just providing value. And it's like, why do you want to provide value? Do you want to provide value? Because that's, that's the way to get rich. And, um, we got to stay true. And there's a book, philosophical book, thus spoke Zarathustra by Frederick. I always mess his last name up. Nietzsche, Nietzsche, Frederick Nietzsche. I think it's Nietzsche, Nietzsche. From what I've heard repeatedly. Nietzsche. It's kind of like Alex Pereira. Okay. No one can say his fucking name right, you know? Pereira, 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 Tatera. Pereira. Everybody. Yeah, everyone says Hands it of stone. Hands of stone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. um, but in that book, um, one of the reasons why I love it, I know we're getting close to four o'clock. I'll wrap it up. Um, one of the reasons why I love that book is because when I came out of the army, um, I was real disenchanted with American society. I hated, I hated people being in the military and, you know, agreeing to give your life for this country, then coming out and then being, you know, facing racism coming out and, and coming into a world and people are just greedy and selfish. I remember, you know, there was something, something happened. Like I showed up late somewhere or something and somebody tried to rip me a new asshole. I'm like, you know what? You're mad over like five minutes, man. There was a point in time I would have given my life for you. And you're mad over like this little petty shit. I was like, man, all of y'all are just ungrateful. And I can't believe, can't believe I ever, I got, I just felt like I wasted years of my life and really felt lost in that time period. I really hated society and it made me really want to isolate. And I think a lot of veterans deal with that. And it drives them to suicide. So in this book, thus spoke Zarathustra, this individual goes into the mountains for a decade and he, he gets to a point where, um, the sun's coming up and he's like, Oh, you know, exuberant star. Um, how grateful are we for your shine? But what would be the point of your rising every day? If there weren't us here to receive and be grateful for your overflow. Like, what would be the point of you rising every day? And he's, he's like, I feel like that. What's the point of me rising every day if there's no one to receive my love and gifts? And he was like, I want to go back to mankind. So he starts venturing back to society and he crosses this hermit who's living in the woods who also ran away from society. And the hermit was like, why are you going back to society? So you can crawl back broken again. And then the bizarre thrush was like, no, I'm going back because I love man. And I feel like that's what we need to tap into when we talk about serving. Why do you want to serve? Because like what you're talking about, you love seeing people successful. You love, you love, you love people. You love seeing people succeed. You love seeing people happy. You love seeing people live their dreams and, and follow their passions. You know, that's where we need to come from. That's like the most genuine space And that book is so powerful because the whole book is written from the perspective of someone who dedicated 10 years of their life towards meditating and then wants to share that because they just love people and want other people to, to be prosperous. Yeah, man, that's powerful shit. I, uh, yeah, I'm going to re-listen to that. I, I downloaded I have that on Audible, and I got to listen to it. I don't know if I – yeah, I got to listen to it again. I'll, I'll, I'll listen to it on my walks. But, um, yeah, you got to love – there's a couple of things. I know you got to get going, man, but we got four minutes here. Real quick, I'll hurry up. Do it. Do um, it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to – you definitely – and I used to be at a point where I was like, fuck, I want to go to Kauai. I want to get away from people. I want to – you know, this society is fucked, you know, like after being a cop for 10 mm -hmm. years and seeing that dark shit, you know, and – having to really go into a dark place and seeing people just, you know, just completely enslaved in, in the matrix and in the system and being annoyed by that and uh, seeing people just eating up the propaganda and letting the government and the news control their lives and shit, walking zombies, you know, fucking night of the living dead humanity. That, that's where mm -hmm. my, my mind was for a long time. But um, through growth and maturity, I've gotten to a point where I, I, I love man, you know, I love humans just like, uh, Zar Thustra was saying, you know, like I, I get out here to, um, you know, downtown and I'm around people and I got a friend 
who he's like, how can you be downtown? There's so many people there. You know, I want to get out in the country. I want to get away. I'm like, fuck, this is where it fucking got it. Like, this is the heart. Like, this is where we can fucking do good, man. This is where they need us. You know, I could go hide in the fucking mountains. I've done, I've, I did that. I went and hit, I went on Kauai and went, you know, into the psychedelics and went up in the mountains. But at some point you take all that you've learned and, and where God has brought you and you bring it to the world, man. And, uh, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing to see people and be around people and network with people and, uh, help touch, you know, and touch, try to touch everybody's life. Everyone you come in contact with, man, try some way or another, try to touch them with that motherfucking Midas touch, you know, try to touch them with something, with a word, with a, with some type of, some type of energy that'll, that'll change their fucking life. You know, like just, mm-hmm. just being positive, just encouraging somebody, you know, just giving somebody an ear to, 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 you know, just being a listener, you can, you know, you can change somebody's life that way. And how can you change people's lives mm-hmm. if you're running from people? You know, how can you, and as you, as you move with that type of intention of let me Midas touch everybody around. Let me try to just bring some of this positivity I've cultivated and let me try to give it to the people around me, man, it fucking elevates your life in every fucking way, in every way. When you come outside of yourself and you start living to touch other people's lives, it will change mm-hmm. everything about your fucking life, you know? And, um, as far as real quick, as far as that Kevin Hart, um, you know, the key to in what you were saying is w- when you start moving toward your vision and you, 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 you figure out what people want from your gift, you know, what people want and you move toward that. And there's people who will fight that. And they're like, no, I like, I want to do what I want to do, you know, but the smart people listen to the people they're serving and whether, even on a small scale, you know, um, I got my buddy, you, the, the key to all of that is you have to take action. You take action and you begin serving and you do it in a, from a place where you don't know what the fuck you're just serving from your heart. And as you serve and you give to people the value and you have the courage to take that action, not knowing what's going to come of it, unattached to it, then you start mm-hmm. seeing, okay, this works. They don't, nobody cares about this. I thought that I thought the world needed this, but they do need this. This is what they're asking for. And then you go into that direction, mm-hmm. you know? And, um, like my buddy Caesar just started a, a YouTube channel and he's fucking going hard at it, man. He's got a whole fucking studio set up. He's a strength and mobility coach, but he also does jujitsu and he's been doing strength and mobility. Uh, shout out Caesar. <clears throat> he's on episode two. Um, he has a channel called move with Caesar on YouTube and he's doing strength and mobility videos. And then he does a couple jujitsu videos showing a jujitsu move and the fucking views shot way the fuck up. And so, you know, we talked about it. We're like, well, fucking keep doing those. Uh, obviously mm-hmm. that's what they're, that's what they're, want from you personally you know so for some reason mm-hmm. that touched the cord fuck but he wouldn't have known that if he didn't put himself out there in front of everybody he knows you know with his passion for mobility and strength and um the mm-hmm. other thing that kevin hart said was that as soon as he he uh as soon as he started being com- not giving a fuck what anyone thinks and being completely authentic and sharing true stories from his life is when his career skyrocketed um you know, mm-hmm. cause you hear all the stories he tells her about his life and shit. And he's very open about it. And, um, mm-hmm. that's also one of the keys to su- success is, is authenticity. And it's hard for people these days to be authentic cause they're so worried about what everyone thinks. But if you can just say, fuck it and be yourself and not give a fuck what anyone thinks, you know, you can really transform your life that way as well. So, and, you know, stop trying to be a certain way for society, you know? So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, man, mm-hmm. this is good. We go on for days about this, but I know you got a friend's giving to go to. So, um, is that there yeah. close to your, is that close to you? The friend's giving? Eh, probably like, you know, a little 30, 40 minute commute. Right. Not too bad. It gets a little grub on, man. Yeah, brother. Mm-hmm. But, um, but no, man, this was, this was really good. This was really good. You know, I'm, um, listening to you and, yeah, and, and listening to myself and, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of jewels and gems in this, you know, um, you know, that, that you brought to me and that I've reminded of myself, you know, reminded myself of. So no, this was good. I'm grateful on this day of gratitude that we were, that we were able to do this, that we have been doing this and that we will continue on doing this, my brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> yep. Grateful, man. Grateful for you, man. I'm grateful yeah. for you wanting yeah. to do this and being open enough to do this, you know, because it's a, you've already started your, you've already started serving unattached to getting something out of it. This is, you know, we're doing hours and hours of serving, you know, so I'm, I'm grateful for you for that. And like you said before, like when you say great gratitude and love, man, they go hand in hand. You know, if I say, I love you, 
what I'm really expressing is, man, I'm grateful to have you in my life. That's the feeling mm-hmm. that's coming with those words, man. I love you. So, man, mm-hmm. I appreciate you, bro. And, um, yeah, let's just, we'll just keep at it, man. Keep serving, keep serving, keep serving up this, uh, this valuable content that comes from the heart and the soul, man. Appreciate you, bro. Make sure you have hey, a good Thanksgiving we'll out doing, there. God. Yes, sir. I yes. Will. Yes. Peace. God. So, um, we'll go over and that just next for people, time. If you, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, a little quick. If that, yeah, <laughs> if people don't know one, you know, that comes from like the five percenters of New York, they would call each other. God, they had this whole philosophy. Um, it's an offshoot of like Islam Clarence 13th X, I believe cre- uh, created, a the 5% nation, but saying God, like you're acknowledging the God that exists in another person. When you say, Hey God, peace, God, you're saying peace one, you're just, you're just coming with peace and wishing peace for that God being that you're talking to, you know? So I think it's a powerful thing. You know, when we, when we talk to our brothers, you know, a hey, peace, God, one thing they would also do when they would talk to women, they would call them earths say women because they create life. So men are God, women are earth. I know there might be some women out there be like, why the fuck can't I be a God? You can be a God too. <laughs> all right, we all gods. We all God, man. We all gods. Yeah. <laughs> we all gods. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, with love. Yeah. It's all love, man. It's all um, love. So make sure you connect with Stefan at Soul Brother Rhythm on Instagram and uh, listen to his other episodes that he's been on the show. And he'll be on more. So just connect. Um, you can check it out. I'm, uh, you can check it out on YouTube. I also have the video up on Spotify. Um, you can listen to audio and video on Spotify, which is pretty dope now. So you can watch the video, but if you turn it off, it keeps playing the audio. And you can also leave us. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave a one minute voice message and we can answer those questions. Play your message on the show. You can also listen on iTunes or wherever else you find podcasts and uh, hit me up on uh, at the increase life at the increase life on Instagram. If you have any questions and just to connect and we appreciate you listening. If you stayed this long and listened to us, we truly appreciate you. Cause I know at this point, there's not too many of you motherfuckers doing that. So, uh, but at some point there will be. So, uh, and you know what, even if it's one person and you came on here and got some value, man, we did, we did our job for the day. So um, yeah. Thanks for listening. Stefan. Appreciate you, man. Hang out for just a second and uh, we'll do this again soon. Appreciate you, bro. No, no doubt. One love. Yep.